Good evening, everyone. My name is Allison Green, Coordinator of Public Programs. Thank you for joining us this evening for the League's discussion lecture series. And a big thanks to the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs for making this series possible. Tonight's program is called The Skin Tones Project, celebrating the beauty of evolution. And we will explore how understanding skin tones in art and representation may be the last frontier in the pursuit of peace, love, and harmony. Our speaker tonight is prolific artist and author Samuel Adokwe. As a student first arriving in the United States from his home in Ghana, Mr. Adokwe won the gold medal in oil painting and best traditional oil painting awards at the Knickerbocker Artists Annual International Exhibition. And he remains the only African artist to teach at all of the prestigious art institutions and academies in New York City. The artist's paintings have appeared on the covers of books, magazines, and newspapers, and have been exhibited at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, DC, and at other galleries and museums. In particular, Mr. Adokwe's portraits are in collections of the Harvard Club, New York City, Columbia University, New York City, Elliott Museum in Stewart, Florida, the National Museum of Naval Aviation in Pensacola, Florida, the Long Island Museum as well. The author's published work, Origin of Inspiration, has won the Manhattan Book Manufacturer Award. All right. And Sam, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, before I turn it over to you, I'll remind our watching audience that this program will conclude with a Q&A. So as you're watching on the live stream, feel free to enter your questions for our speaker as Facebook comments. So Sam, once again, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening and take it away. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, uh, Alison, thanks so much. Uh, your enthusiasm and your way of uh, this course has been the, actually the real reason why it was fun to accept to do this thing. So thank you, it's great to come back. The league is great to uh, give back to an amazing institution that opened all uh, its doors for me when I first started in the U.S. So uh, thank you. Thank you all. Um, I guess uh, let's uh, talk about um, what really the reasons why this project is so essential, is so important, and what inspired this uh, project. I'll be talking about a couple of things. First, I'll be talking about maybe painters who pursue that humanistic approach to uh, the figure on the skin tones. And then I'll be talking about the main reason why this is so important to uh, pursue. The other reason too is how we all have so much talent around. We have talents uh, floating around, talents everywhere, but for some reason, we have not harnessed the talent into a thing or into a force that will help the current situation. As you can see from all over the world, that we could do more to help the world advance and evolve uh, peacefully. So this is, uh, this is what inspired when, uh, when you see a kid going to a church, the most innocent, purest, beautiful, young, white kid going to a church, I'm talking about Dylan Roof. When you see such a, a guy going to a church and killing and shooting people, you, you have to ask, is this kid acting based on a, a skewed philosophy, uh, based on a, a wrong approach to humanity, based on things he that he himself doesn't understand. And if so, if you are an artist, you will also have to ask if politicians are doing their best to help the world evolve and advance peacefully. If scientists are doing their best to help the world evolve and advance peacefully. If doctors are doing so, if all professionals are trying to help, if we are talking about the green 
well, the things we have to do. What are we artists doing? When I look at uh, Dylan Roof, when I look at this young killer who maybe all what it would take would be a certain kind of beautiful idea to us, humanity could help him become a good person. It is very difficult not to think how could you, how can you help? How, how Sam Adoke can help? I, in the end of the day, I have always worked among people. I have worked among different cultures since 19 or maybe since 15. I've always been working among different people, different cultures. I have never known the time that Sam Adokwe worked only among his race. All my life has been between races. I've never been in an environment where I have more than maybe uh, 20 blacks working with them. So it is a good thing from that viewpoint to see what we can, what I can bring to the table to maybe show one side that, hey, this is what you can do to help yeah, this is what you can do. So the whole project is inspired by this idea that when young kids start to kill people, uh, maybe it is not their fault. It is because maybe the whole system, uh, as much as the system is trying, maybe other sector of the system could do better. And this is the reason why I think we artists could do better than maybe just staying home and doing what we want. The only thing that we think matters, not what matters for uh, the public. So the whole idea of the Skin Tone Project, the last frontier for, for the pursuit of peace harmony uh, depends also on colorists with the talent to paint people. So for this reason, let's maybe before it gets to before it gets too dark, let's uh, maybe talk a little bit about paintings and where the history of uh, skin tones has started, so that after that we can talk a little bit about the agenda at hand. So let's uh, roll the slide, um, Andrew. Um, maybe uh, give me the from the Egyptian mummy. This, uh, I, I, I bought a book many, many years ago and this book, uh, this painting was on the cover. And I never knew that one day somewhere, 10, 20 years later, this book will inspire, this image will inspire me to work on the book. The story behind this painting is the Egyptians during the Egyptian empire, they, they don't have the difference in skin. They don't have, they don't think in terms of blacks, white, uh, brown, yellow. They don't think, they just think you are people, you are Egyptian. And for that reason, I also saw that many at times, all the civilizations from Egyptian civilization, Indian civilization, the Hindu civilization, any civilization that has a different variety of different skin tones on their hierarchy, they tend to do well, they tend to grow well, and they, their civilization tend to last longer than any civilization that had uh, followed with only one skin tone. So this is also the reason why you start to believe that wherever there are more uh, different differences in skin tones, you are more likely to have a longer civilization than wherever there isn't. So the uh, Egyptians' view on skin tones was also a reason why sometimes if we have to look at how they saw skin tones, they be, they, the, Egyptian, the Egyptians believe in their outer world, the afterworld, uh, they move on, they go uh, with their soul and they have to go to with their skin tones. So, so they, they took and held skin tones as a very, very, very important factor of the human evolution. And because of that, they will go 
So they, they feel like going to the afterworld and meeting all the gods that had helped them, it is important to, to have the uh, skin tones with them. And let's go to the second slide, the slide after this. This is Ab Abrech Dura. And I picked Abrech Dura for this uh, talk, not only because of how great he is, but of all the, uh, of all the painters I choose, I choose mainly people who were into uh, that humanistic life doing more to humanity than just painting for painting's sake. And of all the painters I admire, Abrek Dura was one of the great painters who maybe his paintings was not just about beautiful portraits, but it's also about going through humanity and finding what the individuals are. So for, him, for that reason, he's very perfect to teach us more of how, what we can extract from people than just painting people. And next slide, please. Skin tone as the last frontier in the pursuit of peace. I wanted to repeat this, not only because um, it is the reason why we're doing the talk, but I hope that if nothing at all sinks in, if nothing at all gets through, and this sentence only gets through anyone who is watching this video, that alone will make me happy. So for that reason, I, anything about the art, anything about the goal, whatever about what is going on, please keep this uh, sentence in mind. Remember, if you, are, if you have the talent, the next time you see anyone different from you, maybe you might want to ask, wow, if I can paint and extract the beautiful side of this different person, would that make other people see the beauty that they've never seen? Because after all, when we describe people, we describe them yellow, black, white, brown. But now that this sentence comes in, will you be able to see more beautiful in a yellow person than you used to see before? When you see a black, <laughs> actually I never even knew I can see purple on my face until I went to the league actually. I will be painting and my students will tell me, oh, my friends will tell me, oh Sam, look at your forehead, you have purple on your forehead. Sam, look at your cheeks, it's a little orange. And you start to see that just by the fact that the students were looking for that color, Sam was no longer the black um, friend or the black student working with them. And the same, the same to my white friends. The moment I started to see the purples, the pinks, the oranges, the greens and everything, that start to make you see that, oh, we have no white men here and we have no black men here, and we have no brown men here. I don't think we have brought this to the public yet. When I think of France, I think of the beautiful arts. I think of the beautiful paintings. I think of the beautiful portrayal of the place. So my first interaction with France was going there with a preconceived idea that the place is beautiful. The same with Italy. Could there be a way that if we paint people, our first reaction or our first interaction with other people will come from the source of beauty before we even meet them? And if that is the case, will you imagine the difference that will make instead of going to meet a black man, a white man, a brown man, wouldn't it be nice to think you're going to meet another beautiful soul? So the idea that French artists, Italian artists who inspire me to go to Italy or to go to France, having no clue 
that we, I'm just going to meet other people rather thinking, oh, I'm going to a place where it's so beautiful, all based on my perception of the arts I have seen. Could artists bring this to the other people who has not seen people be other people before? Could a hateful person reconsider why he or she doesn't understand others? Could beauty that he will see in, in books, could the skin tone, flesh tones, and the beauty things that are, have been conveyed by other artists, could that help? Uh, I believe so. I believe so because there are four year olds that if you explain beautiful color to them, they never see uh, people the same again. So let's move on to the next slide. Franz Hals. Uh, uh, again, all the painters here are painters of people. They might not be the painters who painted the most beautiful portraits or the most uh, rendered or uh, the most finest uh, people in history, but they painted just people. You look at this kid's face and there's nothing more you could think of than to think of only the beautiful things. If this were to be a poster, posted on a, on, a, on, a, on a bus or a poster on a billboard, what difference would this poster make to black kids who will see this face? I believe they will see a beautiful white kid and from that day on, they, their perception even maybe not from that particular day on, but th this will be embedded in their subconsciousness that it's not just gonna be white head or it's not just gonna be a black head. So Francois, for all his uh, experience, do not go for portrait for portrait's sake, but portrait to uh, bring the best in people. And that's one of the reasons why I choose this uh, image. Let's uh, go on to the next slide. Botticelli. Uh, when, I did, when I designed this, uh, this talk, one of my first uh, agenda, one of my first goals is never ever to speak in the terms of art or in the terms of the theoretical. I am not speaking to, I don't want to speak to artists, I want to speak to people. Every, the language I, I want to use is language to the people. So uh, everything, I don't want to talk about the history of Botticelli, than what this painting, how this painting could help us see uh, the world ahead of us and the people that we're going to meet tomorrow. When you meet people tomorrow, I hope you no longer look at them as you the artist, you the colorist, you the creative people, I hope the next time you meet people on the street, you start to see more, more than just uh, the kind of people you had already known. Imagine, Madonna is from, not from Denmark, not from Norway. Madonna is not from um, Scandinavia, but here we are, Madonna is pure blonde. Jesus, pure blonde. Seven, pure blonde. You have to forgive this artist that he did not paint this because he's promoting pure blonde. If you think that you're wrong, he was just doing some idealized subject to help his religion going on. There is nothing wrong at all about the artist. He lived in a certain time, he lived in certain things, and went for certain effects and got it. Great, 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 great artist. The question is more about us. What do we do? He 
painted to help its agenda for pure, beautiful reason. I am a black artist. I love this painting. I have, <laughs> believe it or not, I bought about 10 posters from the Louvre just for the fear that if I lose one, if I give one away, if I age time comes, I will always have one. I still have it. It's one of my favorite paintings. I don't look at this painting at all from the perspective of a propaganda promoting a race. No, no, it's so wrong to think that way. He lived in a certain time where the skin tone was not the main reason why they paint. We, I, I, I can see myself doing blonde Madonna too. There's nothing at all wrong with it. I can see myself doing that. But there's a call to duty in our time. And the call to duty is misunderstanding, challenges, hate, killing, and all those things brings us to take on a new agenda. And it is because of this new agenda that if I am to paint this same picture today, chances are I will portray the skin tones very, very differently. And this is how we are, artists even have to look at this thing. We should not go back in history and blame these people for what they did because of the time they lived in and because of the demands they have and because of what they have to do for, for their survival's sake. We have a different problem. They had a different problem. Their problem was religion. And yes, of course, uh, if you are religious and you live in a religious time, and you have to help your religion, you have no choice than to be part of the help. We, whether we are Americans or French or citizens of the world, there's, hate, there's too much hate that we, we, that we have to continue the same status quo. So this is where the skin tone uh, project comes in. Now I hope when you see, uh, when you have your own agenda, I'm not gonna say, hey, put black here, put, no, no, that's the one. I'm not going to say, or I am not saying everybody should go around that every painting you have, you should have the other race. No way, because if I'm an, in, uh, if I am in Africa, I'll paint Africans. If I'm in New York, I'll paint New Yorkers. But I want us to pay attention to skin tones. If you paint white figures, I want black admirers to look at this painting and see the beauty in the white figures. And if you're black and you're painting your own people, I want whites to look at your painting and see the beauty that they have been missing, the beauty that the camera cannot capture, the beauty that uh, nothing can capture by, by the, by, but then, than the artist. So it is more a call to duty for us to start to pay attention to the beautiful, colorful nuances of the figures we paint. It, it got nothing to do with um, paint only multicultural thing. No, you cannot do that. It, I will be painting tomorrow, I'll paint white model, I'll paint them as beautiful as I can. You could be painting the Hispanic, Hispanic uh, subject painted as beautiful. Just the, the consciousness that your painting might be one day viewed by someone in Kentucky, someone in Idaho, someone in California. Could you hope that if that person sees that painting, that person could, that person could look at the painting and say, oh my God, I never thought these uh, people are this beautiful. Could one painting do it? No. Could two paintings do, uh, do it? No. But you never know. Trying is still uh, better than not trying. I, I, I once heard a story, I, I was going to paint uh, six Nyaha in one of the monasteries. And uh, I didn't get to paint him, but that was, uh, he got sick and, but that's not the reason of the story. The reason is the guys who were bringing me there to paint him 
I asked them, why would you like to, why would you like me to come all the way here to paint uh, Thich Nhat Hanh? And they told me the story about when he was, I think, 14, he took a picture from a newspaper. The picture is of Buddha. And he clipped or cut the, paper, the, the picture and kept the picture. A few years later, he went to the monastery and became a monk. And now he's one of the, maybe the leading uh, advocator of Buddhism in France. Imagine it took him only one picture of Buddha for him to become who he became. Could your painting too, with beautiful skin tones, could your painting to help someone who might otherwise judge other people wrongly, transform them to start to see more than they see? So this again and again, this is the reason for the, the skin tone project. Let us all with our skill, with our gift, with our colorful experiences, let us help politicians, let us help um, scientists, let us help all the, I call them the knucklehead lefties. Let, them, let us help them uh, to uh, better the world by our contribution. We artists cannot just stay aside and watch everybody working hard, work, watch the intellectuals, the, the uh, lefties, uh, right hand people, right people, whatever. Uh, let us not just watch them always doing their best and we sit back and we complain, complain without us doing something. So this is what I bring to the table. Let us do more with our talent than just uh, doing what only feels good to us. Uh, Andrew, please, uh, next slide. Uh, look at this. I, I once had a Russian mentor and uh, one thing I, one thing I learned from, as sometimes they say, "Where to a wise is enough." One thing I learned from this Russia, Russian artist, it was like, Sam, when you paint, I don't want you to say, "Oh, the background is not as important." So I will spend more time with the figure or the foot. It's not that important. So I will paint the foot less. I will invest less time in the foot than the face. Imagine, look at the skin tones on the black uh, model, uh, or the black subject. And then look at the skin tones on the white subject. Only a beautiful mind, only a beautiful artist, only someone who really, really, really observes, is able to equally portray two different people with equal talent. If you think you're good, I would like to test you with that. When you paint people, chances are the people you are not familiar with will have a different treatment than the people you are familiar with. And uh, there's uh, something on my... Okay. Um, the people you paint are you are familiar with is very different from the people that you're not familiar with. So this uh, Frederick of Brazil, when I saw this painting, I didn't even want to, I didn't want to know more. Just the sensitivity towards the morals in the subject tells me alone that it fits exactly. If Frederick Brazil were to live in America today and see what is going on, or were to live in the world today and see all the hate that is going on, I like to think his works will make a big difference that we have, uh, than we can imagine. Uh, next. Uh, next slide, please. Ah, the mailman. There, again, we go back to my Russian mentor. He said, you don't paint people in suit and tie different 
than you paint the average uh, subject. Van Gogh was one of the few artists too. That his work tells us that it doesn't matter whether you painted the mayor or you painted the president or you painting the doorman, the medical guy, paint them with the same intensity, passion, love. And it is this intensity, passion, and love that if we can bring in for painting people, we could do better helping others understand people better. And next slide. When I first um, decided, um, when I first launched this uh, project, many of my friends or many of some of my students were worried or they were like, oh, is this gonna be, you just have to paint like uh, the old master technique. You have to uh, be well skilled before you can approach the figure the way you want it, Sam. And of course not. If you are an abstract artist and you put the same intensity in painting different people, the message will come across. You don't have to be an uh, abstract artist. You don't have to be a uh, representational artist. You don't have to be classic artist. You just have to pay attention. We are going to see the world different, of course. No one, nobody is gonna, no one will have the same sentiment like um, Matisse, and no one is gonna paint like Picasso. But within your own talent, will you pay attention to skin tones? I don't know anything about uh, this guy, but I can, know, I can see that Matisse was paying attention to the beautiful nuances, to the beautiful aspect of his skin tone than just a male figure. It's not just a male figure standing there, maybe done as a, uh, someone trying to learn how to paint. But the intensity in which Matisse looked at this subject tells us more his love for uh, skin tones than just the skill he used. No artist can ever look at a male nude this way and achieve this way and say, oh, I wasn't so interested in the skin tones. Believe me, anyone who paints this way shows that from the foot to the face, from the nose to the hands, from the thighs to the back chest, he was very, very aware of what is going on, what is changing, what is. So for that reason, Matisse too, did Matisse painted this way just because of the figure or the philosophy that guides him? Matisse, if you read about him, his philosophy most often that repeated is, I want to create a beautiful picture that even the worker, when they come home and relax him, my painting could relax them. Wow. Wouldn't it be nice to if our skin tones could help others see people differently? The greatest artist, the greatest designer, the greatest colorist in his time said that I am not a colorist. I just happen to love people so much that I want to help them to help them meditate, to help them relax, to help them uh, grow. It's not what I know, but what I want my work to do for others. It is not what I know. It is not what I can do. It is not what I must do. I work for people. I want the world around me to relax, to enjoy, to console, to meditate when they look at my work. What are we doing in return? I love to paint apples. I love to paint flowers, but it is that the only agenda I can take on when my, all my life, 
I've worked around beautiful people and now seeing the world fall apart because of hate. Have I done a great job telling the world around me how beautiful the people I've met are? And this is what I'm, this is what the project is about. The next time you paint people and uh, look at them from the humanistic point, maybe look at them, think of, of Matisse, maybe look at these models in front of you. How would my painting help someone who has never seen this subject before? How would my painting make them start to see that there's more to this subject than just a person? And it's like this. Van Gogh. Of course, uh, he's someone who almost tells you more than uh, his painting tells you more than what anyone can tell about his painting. Uh, he started from uh, he his goal was to help people all the way from uh, spiritual, religious, uh, theological aspect of how when he couldn't. He brought all those passion and quest to painting. And in the end, he has helped people find more uh, of their skill and talent than many, many, many uh, people. So for that reason, go no far. The works of Van Gogh alone can tell you what we need in our time. When I say what we need in our time, don't forget, a few months ago, our whole, nation, our, our whole nation was on fire. Maybe the whole world was on fire, all because of hate. All because of hate. And yet, the, some of the be most beautiful people I've ever seen are the, most, the people who are different from me. And I have spent over, what, over 30 years painting and just have to stay home and just worry that some politicians should do something when they're doing their best to help us, worry that the police should do something when the police are helping, they're doing everything to help bring the peace. Where is the hate hiding? We don't know, but we know art goes far. We know art reproduce goes far. We know many people who can stand on the street hate in the end, they go home, they read books, they look at images, they look at images on the computer. What are we doing? What are we going to be doing to help this discourse, to help these challenges that we are facing in our time? I strongly believe it's no challenge if we all uh, put on our, uh, our best parts, our best skills to bring uh, people uh, in color to the public, uh, to the public. You don't have to like the face of this painting to see the passion in which he used. Many people might not like the painting you do, but guess what? If you have the passion in it, if you have the love in it, if you were, if you were on the mission, to make people see more, they will see. Next image. I know out there many people will disagree or many people will try to say, no, Sam, you cannot credit uh, Lucian Freud for what our world has become. I want anyone to challenge me that before Lucian Freud, how many people who maybe are a big concern of their weight, who are proud enough to wear tights, proud and walk on the street without any worries, how many people can say that before Lucian Freud, people who are a bit concerned with their weight, walk around as if there was nobody there with big pride. 
if you look at people on the street before Lucian Freud and after Lucian Freud, it won't be a secret to see how Lucian Freud has made us to love uh, people who might be concerned of their weight. We never used to see them beautiful, now we do. We never used to see them um, people worthy of painting, now we do. So if Lucian Freud can do the same thing to people who are concerned with their weight, can't we do the same thing with their fresh stone or with fresh stones? So for this reason, I think uh, Lucian Freud taking on that mission, now we can look back and say it was Lucian Freud. That's why maybe uh, people who are concerned with their weight now can have the pride that they deserve. Next. Uh, this is uh, something I painted a few or many, many years ago when I was a student. And again, I went for uh, the skin tone. So I think, I don't know, I think we're running out of time. So I'm gonna rush through these slides and everything. But this is something I did when I was a student with the same mission. He was a friend of mine. And uh, so let's go on the next uh, slide. This is a Russian. If you look at the painting before and this one, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. There was no extra uh, intense look on the black model. Like my Russian model, this is something I also did during my transitional time from school to becoming a professional. And next slide. Uh, this is a friend of mine, Colin Barry. Colin Barry is a, also the kind of people we call them uh, painters of people. And again, uh, great skin tone does not necessarily mean you have to get all different colors. Uh, she has a very nice, calm, passive uh, way of painting her faces. And this is a great example that we don't need one style to paint beautiful skin tones. Uh, Colin Barry is an amazing artist. You guys should look her up. The next slide. This is a painting of mine. I did a few years ago. And uh, again, my goal, my only goal was the skin tones. So that's what I, I always believe if I can bring this up, if I can bring the nuances of people up, people will see their subject differently. I want any, a different race to look at this painting and see the beauty in the other. Next slide. And this is something I did when I was a, a student, actually. So I, I, I was uh, still in pursuit of color. And um, here it's a bit subdued, but nothing too uh, extreme about color. But still, I wish I had given details about it. It's such a large painting that in, when it's repro reproduced small, you don't see many things in details. And next slide. This is by a friend of mine, Ron Cher. Uh, Ron Cher is also the kind of uh, modern artist, a painter of our time. And uh, he too is a, the uh, kind of artist, I term them as uh, painters of people. They paint from children to uh, politicians. One artists in the country now uh, for that reason you don't have to just be uh, using color all the time or you don't have to be very um, aggressive his way of looking at people around him is very uh, soothing very beautiful very it's more about the rendering and i respect ron so much that when i decided to select these pictures i feel like a painter of people like him should never ever be left behind. If you, if you, again, it's a very large painting. So when you look at the face, it is hard to see all the subtle, beautiful nuances on the face. But hopefully maybe you will get to enjoy the 
nuances another time when it's blown up. The next slide. Skin tone, the last frontier in the pursuit of peace and harmony. The next slide, please. <laughs> this, this uh, I don't know, there's something about my uh, kennel that whenever I see the painting, it, it brings a smile. It's, it's a childhood friend that I've known him since we were like six or seven. And uh, one day I, uh, I, my phone rang and he was on the line. He has become a big top gun in the army. And he came and visited. And actually he was my first black African, pure African uh, that I painted. Up till then, most of the painters, uh, most of the, paint, uh, the painters of black people I painted were from, were Africans who live here, but he was the first African who. So I paid particular attention on his nuances, just to just oppose with maybe myself, who have been here for a while, to see the kind of nuances on him and the kind of nuances on uh, people here. So next slide, please. This is, uh, I feel like this young lady, she's a young artist living in uh, France. It seems like he, he, she, works, she works very hard. And uh, when you look at uh, her, NS Longeville, you should check her out. She's very, very, very passionate about painting people. And uh, year round, all oh, what she paint, paint more, lots of different beautiful people. And there's something about her work, very something meditative, uh, pensive. She always tend to capture something about people that normally the average won't be. And next slide. And this is something I did in class. I did as uh, uh, I was, it was a demonstration for my uh, students. So our goal in class, like I do all the time, every now and then we set up a model and the goal was to pursue uh, skin tone, just enough to help them understand the colors to mix in order to achieve good skin tones. Let's, let, let's go. On. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. So I guess in the end, we, See that how could we make our talent useful to, for the challenges we are facing? That's what the whole thing is about. How could we make our talent useful for the, ta ta uh, for the challenges we are facing? And what are we doing today? What are we doing today to help? Uh, this is what this, uh, it's about, I believe it's a noble cause we should take on. I believe it is a, a good cause. I believe it is something that will represent our time. The Renaissance did their share. The Impressionism did their share. The Middle Ages did their share. What in our time, what challenges are we facing? What talent do we have that could represent our time? So for this reason, uh, this book goes more. Those of you interested in, interested in history, those of you interested in artistic language, the book will offer you this. But for this talk, it's more important for me to make it as uh, down to earth as possible. And uh, to the Art Students League, as you know, are facing a lot of uh, this because of the pandemic and because of what is going on. And uh, they're giving a lot of different beautiful classes online that you can register and have some teachers help you understand skin tones. So don't forget to uh, visit the Art Students League and on, online and see all the courses they're uh, teaching. And to achieve uh, this, maybe let's go on to the, uh, the, the, the picture before, the picture, yeah. I, I have a very simple palette, my basic palette. I start from white, lemon yellow, 
cadmium yellow, yellow alpha, raw sienna, orange red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, permanent green, viridian green, and maybe sometimes light green. That's all I use. So again, sometimes I often tell students, it's not so much of the palette that I use, but beautify your mind first in order to see the beauty in people. So what I saw in on her is more about what maybe I went to find. And my palette therefore was just an assistant to help me. So I guess um, I I guess um, that's if you have any questions to Well, hello again, Sam. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, this really incredible talk. And to our watching audience, um, and Sam, I'd like to share with you, we've just been receiving a lot of really positive comments. So thank you everyone for how you're tuning in and really engaging in this conversation. Um, I'd love to dive into some questions with you, Sam. We have a lot of really exciting questions from our audience here. Um, so to get the ball rolling, the, the last thing that you mentioned was you were showing us this portrait um, and talking about how you're actually building your palette. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to ask you, can you speak a little bit more about selecting these materials? What are the essential colors that every artist needs to have in their palette if they're working in oils? And can you speak also a little bit to the studio setup? How do you arrange light and background? And uh, my palette is a very, very simple palette. It's uh, based on the basic colors. As I mentioned before, yellow, cadmium yellow, and lemon yellow, orange, and cadmium red, alizarin crimson, diocesan purple, and very ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, mm -hmm. and then cobalt blue, and viridian green and permanent green. So that's basically my palette. The next uh, thing is um, I let the model do a lot of the work, which means that I don't impose different lighting. I don't use uh, extraordinary, something that is out of norm. I use basic lighting to uh, paint my subject. Um, I, I don't do, honestly, I don't do anything different. I believe the whole art is in the scene and in the capturing. So mm -hmm. I don't use different mediums. Uh, linseed oil is good enough for me. Uh, linseed oil is good enough for me. And um, paint thinner is not good enough for me. When I was a student, I was uh, taught to do so much with so little. And that always stuck with me. So I don't have like something so different from the average, but what I have different is a training to see, look and miss carefully. That is what maybe will differentiate uh, how I approach work and other uh, styles. The, the quest to pursue the, 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 the right color, not extreme. I'm not, I'm, I'm the idea of push a color, don't push it. No, I, I, I train myself to look very, 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 very careful. Yeah, it definitely, it seems, the question. yeah. Um, absolutely. It seems like this, you know, there's this through line in the topics you're discussing about really the importance of observation yeah. and how much work is happening with the mind, not yeah. just the eye and not just the materials you're yeah. using, but on this philosophical level. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, maybe to add to, to that, I would say to students, if you are really, 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 really interested in capturing good skin tones, be... Um, be on a lookout for painters like maybe Sajin, painters like um, Soroya. Uh, it is their work when blown up, you will learn more. You will, you will be more like trying to see how they saw. Mm. Like I, I will say, don't almost try to use what I'm using, but try to understand why I use what I use and try to understand 
why I saw what I see. Right, uh, the understanding of why and how I saw what I saw and how I mixed, it is more essential because with that, you can almost make the greater skin tone with three colors. Mm. And Franz Haas, as most of you know, he used only three colors, maybe three, five colors. Mm. You know? And Franz Haas can get more beautiful nuances than someone with maybe 19 colors. Wow. So it was not because Franz Haas used three colors or Soroya used 19 colors, but it was because of the philosophical mm. reason why they must see the face the way they saw it. Right. And here's a related question to that from our audience. As we're talking about these different methods that an artist might apply, uh, Jacob asks, are all skin tones equally challenging to paint? And I'll add to that, the challenges presented, do you think that's just based on the artist? Um, is it harder to paint you know, from people resembling your own skin or, or harder to paint from very different skin tones? That is the, that's a, a very, very, very insightful question. That actually that I, I'm glad uh, Jacob asked that uh, because uh, this will allow us to actually uncover. If you can paint beautiful apple, you can paint beautiful skin tone. And therefore, if you can paint beautiful black skin tone, you can paint beautiful white skin tone. The reason is, if you paint apple as if you know apple, chances are you're going to miss all the beautiful nuances on the apple. But if you paint apple as if, look at this fruit. Who created this fruit? Where is this fruit coming from? Why am I painting this fruit? What should people enjoy from this fruit? Is there a reason why I should paint another apple? The kind of love the quest for, to understand and the quest to beautify that thing can lead you to paint other people too. So if you paint um, your, maybe if you think, paint a, a self-portrait and you say, oh, I know myself so much, chances are you miss more color, you, you, you miss, M -I -S -S, you miss more colors on your own skin tone mm. than you will paint someone different because the, person who is different, you're going to look at that person as if, oh, wow, she's so unique, she's so beautiful. I'm going to go and search for all the colors. But you look at yourself, you say, oh, I know myself. My forehead is this, and you will miss the noise. So for Jacob, it is more the intensity you bring to the faces that will make you, that will unveil more new beautiful things to you, not so much of what the thing is. You could have the most richest skin tone and be passive about it. And you can have most um, uh, blended skin tone and be more intense about it. Mm. So I think the intensity we bring to the people is more important than. Well, great. Thank you so much. Um, and Sam, I'd like to let you know, uh, we received so many wonderful questions. Uh, we are at seven o'clock right now. I'm wondering if you want to just take one more and then we'll wrap up. So yeah, yeah, of course. great. One final question um, comes from Simon, um, an interesting cross-disciplinary question. Um, Simon says, I'm a musician. Um, many of the subjects in songs are dark and serious and a worry that he has as an artist um, is that people won't be able to enjoy and experience this beauty that is another through line through your topics here, this idea of beautifying the mind. So his question is, have you ever come through this in your process while working? If you're painting um, you know, serious subjects, how can you keep the lightness and beauty? And the thing is, uh, Simon, 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 uh, believe it or not, I mentor musicians. I know of many, many musicians. Most of, if you check my name out, maybe you'll see the musicians that I have mentored. So Simon, I have a good uh, answer for you. There is nothing like dark, a happy, melancholy. It's what we always bring to the table. If you find yourself going too dark, maybe you, for your own self-improvement, might want to have some musician or some great music that are more lighter. And so one error, more, I, I mean, one error from my observation with students 
we start to narrow ourselves too soon. There is Mozart, there's Beethoven, there's Rolling Stone, there is Nat King Cole. There is, so uh, we have Kirk Cobain. There are sometimes the most beautiful songs of Kirk Cobain are dark. And then there are sometimes he wants to jump the wall and kill everybody. And sometimes he wants to sing to a little four-year-old kid. So if you look at the lifestyle of great people, you will, you will see that they, they don't always narrow themselves to one form of creation. How could Kek Cobain sing for a 60-year-old kid and then yet wants to run down the whole house sometimes? So uh, Simon, I think great musicians have actually more power to do more effectively than maybe more effectively than most professions. So if you are into thinking big and want to beautify your mind and you think it's not there, I don't think you should worry at all. I think you should just um, start to look, start to think that there are great things all around you and the ones that you will gravitate to are the ones that will become you. So if you gravitate into only yourself, you will start to see only the things that torment you that you think you don't like. But if you expand and see yourself also as an evolving being, the, if you see yourself as an evolving being, it becomes very easy to uh, reach out for things that will enhance what you have. Oh, great. I think that's a wonderful note to end on. So I'm going to have to say thank you again, Sam, so much. This was a beautiful presentation that we shared with you this evening. Um, and I think I speak for our audience as well when I say these uh, in times like these, um, you know, th these topics beautifying the mind, observation. It's so striking and critical, both for us as artists, but also members of this community. So thank you for bringing these topics to us tonight. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you as well to our participating audience uh, for providing these thoughtful questions and to keep this conversation alive. Um, for more information, however, you can continue this conversation yourself, head to the skintonesproject.com to learn more about this movement that Sam has been walking us through and to find his published works where you can continue your reading on these topics. We will be uploading a recording of this program tonight um, on our YouTube channel. Um, so you can expect that in the coming days. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us at ASLNYC on Instagram. Please also stay tuned for more information on our next public programs. You can uh, check our website for updates. Um, stay up to date with our online class offerings as well. So I have just one more message for Sam and to our watching audience tonight, which is enjoy the rest of your evening and as always stay healthy.